Welcome, everybody, to the debut episode of Keeping It Real with Najee Wilkins. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm very excited. I have a great line of guests today. Got Cedric King for Lovejoy, Kim Hickson for Maris, and then we're going to close out the segment with Craig Sager. who's going to talk about some women basketball, some transfers, and a bunch of things like that. But first and foremost, before we get started, definitely want to thank the men behind the plan of having me host this show, uh, IJ Rosenberg, Graham David. I uh, just appreciate them hiring me and putting me in this position to succeed and allowing me to host my own show. So it's really incredible. I've never hosted a live show, so I am super excited and stoked. And we're going to go and start with uh, Cedric King, who I do have on right now. So, Co- Coach, how are you doing today? Doing great. I'm doing great. After the technical difficulties, everything is good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a question for you, Coach, before we even start. Just an icebreaker. This, what, are, what do you enjoy most about coaching? Uh, you broke up and say that one more time for me. Yes, sir. What do you enjoy most about coaching? Um, biggest part that I've found is when the kids leave and they send you these text messages saying, Coach, I appreciate you holding me accountable. Though that's the biggest, that's better than anything. Yes, sir. And 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 for you, where did your kind of love for basketball come from? You know, you know, and what are some things you're hoping your girls can kind of take from you and all the lessons that you teach them throughout the season? Um, the biggest thing is for me, uh, my love just growing up, uh, just playing ball my whole life, playing in high school, um, just what my family did. We just grew up at a young age playing. So my love started back, uh, Troy, Alabama from Alabama. Um, but the biggest thing now I like to say I'm using basketball to teach life lessons and I'm trying to get the kids to understand that your discipline is what will take you to whatever decisions, choices that you make in life. Um, just make sure you're disciplined about doing it and, you know, don't just take it all, take it yourself to take control of your destiny. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to get out more. I'm just trying to get them an opportunity to be productive in society. That's what I always say. I want you to be the most productive in society that can. And being productive in society can mean being basketball, but the ball goes flat. So, Let's make sure we're productive for our entire life. So just life lessons. Yes, sir. And, and let's talk a little bit about last year, Coach. You guys routed off 19 straight victories to close out the season. I mean, what lets your team get it so hot, locking in, being able to go on that run, and eventually win that state title? Well, one thing we talk about at Lovejoy is we always in it to win the last game. So we don't go into any season not thinking how to win the last game. So we prepare for winning the last game on the first day of preseason workouts until we get into the spring, whenever. It's always a win the last game mindset. That's always our mission. And we always feel as though we don't win it this year. Let's put ourselves and present it to win it the following year. Uh, we had a group of seniors. I mean, one is playing at Mercer, one is playing at Central Florida, uh, one is playing at Shorter, and one is playing at Savannah State. Um, they were a critical part of that team. And, uh, they bought in. And, uh, Brianna Hardy, that's at Central Florida, she was with us four-year, four-year starter. She really led the team and put us on our back and said we were, she's not going to let us lose. And, you know, it was through her rebounding and just being the voice of the team. Uh, just it was a magical moment. It was happy to see. Um, you know, I think if we would have came around earlier, we would have been even more special. We were special, but I thought we could have been even more if we would have came around a little bit. Yes, sir. And, and outlining this year, Coach, just um, what went behind kind of that non-region schedule? Who are, who are some notable opponents that you see on there? I see you scheduled Norcross last year. Very close victory. I think it was three points. Last year they won the state title. You know, how is that kind of with them? Is that kind of building into a, a rivalry there kind of in 7A, even though you guys are 6A at school? Just tell me a little about the non-region schedule. Um, so with us, we, we got talent. So, I mean, I have a um, top five um, – Top 50 point guard coming back. That's a uh, junior. And then we have Lanaya Foster, who's uh, about to commit between Austin P and Furman. Um, so we have talent. So whenever you have talent, you want to try to compete against the uh, the top teams that are in the state. So we're playing Brookwood again. Well, we're playing Brookwood. We're playing Norcross again. Um, who else? We're playing Campbell. Uh, of course, our region is loaded. We got Woodward, Rockdale. Uh, Forest Park that's in the region so we have a loaded region and then we're going down to Miami and playing in the Junior Orange Bowl Classic so uh, we 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 always want to make sure we're competing because uh, 
that's putting yourself in position to win the last game if you're competing against the top because it's giving you opportunity to make adjustments and just showing you how hard you got to compete. Yes, sir. Now, tell me about the team this year. Obviously, you returned Brianna Preston, who you says top 50. We know how good she is. Um, but how many returning starters did you bring back from last year into going to this season? And who are kind of some players you're excited about this year that might be flying under the radar for you? Well, we uh, Brianna Preston, of course, uh, she was starter. And actually, the four seniors started. So none of the girls started. Now, Lanaya Foster was a starter, per se. Um, I'm excited to see her because she has to be the senior uh, leader that we need. Like anytime we actually won the last game, it's because we have a senior that led us. Uh, so I'm hoping she can take that role of Brianna Hardy. Um, I have Ayana Boyd, who um, we're hoping that can mature into being a great player for us. Uh, we have a sophomore in Kamaya Muldrow. Um, that's a so second year. I'm hoping she can do some things. And then we have some young girls that you know, I'm hoping that these older girls that have been in the program can help lead and make us, uh, you know, last game worthy again. Yes, sir. And then, you know, for you, you know, uh, who are some players that's kind of like improved? Sometimes you'll see a player kind of come out of nowhere. You mentioned um, some of the players, but just who is somebody that like, wow, this person impressed me in tryouts. They've come to camp very focused. They look like they want to take that next step into development and into their career. Uh, our 2026 Kamaya Modro. She's a girl that you can see it in her eyes. You can see it in her competition that she really wants to make an impact this year. And uh, I'm hoping she wills, but you can feel it. You can see her working. She's a hard worker. She's dedicated. She's focused. Uh, so I'm hoping all the work that she's putting in will transfer to uh, on the court. Yes, sir. Now let's talk about Brianna Preston. Last year, led you in scoring 16 points per game, five and a half assists for you. Led, uh, I think it was second in the team in steals at 2.4. Tell me about her impact on both sides of the ball, and then what does she bring just from a leadership perspective and kind of rallying your troops and making sure they're focused when they're going into practice or even games? She's super talented, super athletic, super quick. Um, and leadership is something that we're working with her constantly to get there. Um and she led us in scoring, led us in passing. She's a per point guard, uh, keeping her in attack mode to understand that you don't, to be a scorer first before you're a passer is something we constantly work with her. Her leadership is uh, improving, and it's something that I always say about this young lady, she's gotten better every year. So I can't wait to see what we come of her this year. But, uh, I mean, it's a reason why she got to two of the top preseason five Top five in the preseason at Warner with Tennessee and Texas. Both of them have offers, and they're they're here calling. They're doing everything they can to try to get her. And uh, she's a special young lady, and she's just at the very infinite stages of her growth. And it's amazing to see what she is now because I know there's so much more to go with her. And uh, just like we say, leadership, there's just so much more to go with her because uh, her product is nowhere near finished. And uh, it's going to be amazing to see where this young lady ends up at. Yes, sir. And now I want to talk about a player you've been kind of mentioning throughout this interview, Lanaya Foster, last year in the front court, second in scoring, led you in rebounds. Tell me about her and what what are you excited to see out of her this season? Oh, man, just all – well, I was excited in the summer. She went out and earned a lot of mid-major offers. I was so impressed. I was so impressed with her character to understand that this is probably the level that she should play at, where she can maximize who she is. Uh, I've been so impressed with her, just her maturity. She's come in as a girl that she gets it now. Like coming from her freshman year to now, it's like the light is finally clicked on. I get it. And she's still growing. But to see her maturity, to see her impact, and, you know, she's still learning how to develop to lead this team because for us to be last game worthy, it will start and probably finish with her because she has to be that vocal leader. She has to be that leader every day in practice and so far she's done that and uh I, I can't wait uh I'm, I'm just so happy for her. I can't wait till she picks her college uh she's gaining her confidence uh she's always been a you know rebound scoring assist girl she, she she's just a great kid and it's it's so great to see her being here for four years and uh she went on a couple visits and she come back and she said coach king I appreciate you preparing me because she felt like She's so prepared for the next level, and uh, she's so looking forward to going out uh, with a with a bang her senior year. Because between her and Brianna Preston, 
Um, they're going to have to do a lot because we don't have a lot of depth. And uh, we, we'll see, man. We, you know, hopefully we last game work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then for you, just talking about your team, like offensively and defensively, we start with offense first. Is there any certain kind of strategy you like to employ? Do you like to feed the post? Do you like perimeter shooting? Do you like to just get it to your, you know, your kind of star players and let them cook? What's kind of some things you like to do offensively? And then defensively, what's kind of your emphasis and your focus as well? Well, the biggest and the thing that we try to do more than anything is uh, from an offensive standpoint is try to get the easy points, try to play in transition as much as possible. Uh, last year, we averaged 76 points a game. Um, that was astronomical at what we did last year. So this year's team can shoot a little bit better. So we're hoping that can increase a little there. It's just getting out, playing in transition. Uh, that means you got to be in condition. I mean, you got to push the ball and have somebody like Gerona Preston that allows you to be able to play that way because she's a, she's a, you know, she's quick as heck. Um, and then defensively, you know, defense to me is really about effort. We play to our scouting report and we want to take out the, uh, the other team's best player and make it tough, make the girls that not necessarily may want to make those plays, make them make plays. So it's just about playing hard. It always finishes with rebounding. We won a state championship off of rebounding this past year. It really wasn't our offense. It's just we dominated the boards and uh, ground oppression laid a hood. Both Division One schools were so great. But uh, rebounding, run the court, play free, don't play with thought, uh, take what the defense give you, play unselfish, play hard, and, you know, all the things that most coaches want in life. It's just about how we emphasize it and holding each other accountable to uh, – our discipline to do it. Yes, sir. Now let's talk about your classification 6A. I'm pretty sure you're aware of this, but you are bringing in now two defending state champions in Maris that's moved up to your classification 6A. Also brought in, um, I believe it was Woodward Academy. So just looking at that, you know, how do you feel about that from a culture perspective and, you know, how are you trying to prepare girls against probably going to be a more heightened level of competition this year? Uh, it's been nothing new. I've been in a region with Westlake, and Westlake won four state championships. Uh, I've been in a region with Tucker. Tucker won a state championship. So it's nothing new for us. We've won the state championship. Forest Park has won the state championship. So we've always felt that 6A is probably the toughest um, classification regardless. Like we've had Buford, we've had the Carrollton's, we've had the Langston Hughes. So that's nothing new from us. Uh, and it's never about what someone else is is always about us and how we're going to maximize who we are uh, because we've also been on a boat where we did maximize who we are and we did not come up uh, on, we came up short. So we got to just try to maximize us and be the best that we can be. And whoever comes in front of us, let's just hope that our better is better than what they got to offer that day. Yes, sir. And then, you know, just talking about one more thing on your schedule, just your region schedule, you know, was there any opponents, obviously you focusing on yourself and, you know, what you guys do matters the most, but anybody on that region schedule that kind of stands out to you coming into the season? Well, Rockdale has a lot of college players. on it. Rockdale has the Carnegie girl who's very highly recruited. Um, so Rockdale has a lot of girls that are college level girls. I would think I, I think Rodell is probably the most talented team as far as being recruitable college. Now, can they bring it together? It's different, but they do have they have several girls on that team that are college are recruited kids. Um, Forest Park has a few girls that are college recruited kids. Woodward, uh, man, the six A is a bear. I think my classification is good. I go against those those girls in our classification because out of those out in our classification, we have four teams that are ranked in the top 10. Um, then you got River Ridge that um, she coach does such a great job up there and uh, they're hungry. They've been there for the last three years. Uh, bump ran in a headache with Westlake, ran in a headache with us. So I think uh, as point guards a senior this year. So I'm sure they're trying to finish off her senior year. Great because they're competitors. They play hard. They play the right way. I mean, so we'll see. They got them preseason ranked number one. So uh, we will see how things work, man. Like I said, we're going to – I try not to even focus down the road, just stay in the moment like most coaches do, and uh, hopefully we can stay healthy, man. Health has a big concern with everything as well, too. Yes, sir. And final coach, final question, Coach, before we wrap up, and I'll let you go for today. Just, you know, what are you expecting from the team this year, and, and what are some things, some goals you've kind of outlined for the team and that you want to accomplish this season? 
Well, we, we're, we're simple. Uh, and when I say that, uh, we stick to our discipline. And it's about coming in each day and being disciplined to us and getting better and focus on getting better player development on the court, off the court, becoming a better team, becoming more connected, just loving each other. You know, we got five C's. We want to care. We want to communicate. We want to compete. We want to be confident. And we want to be consistent. Like our last thing is always consistent. If we can get consistent in what we do, you know, we'll let the chips fall where they may and uh, just continue to try to be the best that we can be because uh, we know that uh, we're not the most talented. So we have to just give it the best we can. We have talent, but we got to maximize who we are. And if we just maximize who we are, uh, I'm a happy coach with that end because uh, that's what it's all about. But the journey to maximizing is long. It's hard. It's a lot of frustration. It's a lot of yelling as the kids may think but you know I think I got a word from Gene during this aggressive counseling it's a lot of things that goes into play uh that makes the team unique and uh I'm looking forward to that journey and uh I'm starting to uh embrace I'm, I'm becoming a better coach that is embracing the hardness of it because it's never easy um once you embrace that and you understand that and you get the kids to understand that this anything that you're trying to accomplish it pretty much not that easy. You just got to discipline yourself to get through it and enjoy the fruits of your life. Yes, sir. Well, thanks again, Coach, for joining the show today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for coming on. Thank on. you. I appreciate you thinking about me, man. That's This is awesome. I, I love it. And uh, congratulations. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best, and I will be listening going forward. Yes, sir. Hope to talk to you again soon, Coach. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, guys, that was Coach Cedric King for Lovejoy. A pleasure talking to him and kind of looking at his team this year. Lanaya Foster in the front court and Brianna Preston, kind of their star player, had a big season last year, led them in points. So super stoked to time to talk to him. And we'll have this episode actually up on our YouTube page, Score ATL or Score Atlanta on YouTube. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that and you can get the full interview there. And we're going to take a quick break. Uh, thank our sponsors, Jordan. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back. I am excited to talk to Kim Hickson, Marist women's basketball coach. They had a phenomenal season last year. Avery Fantucci hit the buzzer beater half court, send the game to overtime, and she hit the game-winning layup. She is currently, I believe, at Michigan playing softball. So, um, you know, bringing some new players in, Katie Harpering is going to be a big player to keep an eye on. And obviously, I'm going to talk to Coach and find out more about her team. But let's go ahead and bring her on. Hey, Coach. Hey. Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for reaching out. This yes, is a great ma'am. opportunity so, for us. Yes, ma'am. So last year you guys, led by Avery Fantucci, hit the half-court shot for you, um, sent the game into overtime, and then hit the buzzer beater, won the first championship in school history last year. Just kind of walk us through how that was for your team, winning the first state championship in school history. It was incredible from uh, just the beginning of the season to the end. We lost our, uh, you know, post player at the first game of the year. Didn't know how the game year was going to go. Um, just fought through a lot of adversity uh, throughout the year with um, some more injuries and just, you know, sickness and all kinds of stuff and just ended up uh, putting ourselves in a position to, to be in the state championship. Um, and the kids just – I thought they overachieved all year, um, especially through the state playoffs. Um none more so than the state championship game. We got down, you know, 11 or so twice, and uh, kids just were resilient. They fought back, and um, it just it, it epitomized our whole year, uh, the state championship. Just never give up, um, fight through adversity, and uh, just, you know, you give yourself an opportunity to win, and, and you do. We needed a miracle to get there, obviously, with a half-court shot, but uh, it's just a super, super, uh, you know, what a great group to bring home the first state championship. Um, we don't have any – basketball players as far as going to college we have at one at Michigan playing softball and one playing uh, um, soccer at Furman so it just shows you what two sport athletes can do and just if you work hard and you have great chemistry and love each other so um, it was super special for this group to do it 
Yes, ma'am. And and who are some returning starters for you this year? And and who are some of the kind of new players that's kind of just impressed you so far in tryouts and kind of coming into camp before the season kicks off? Funny story. We have no returners. I had five senior starters, so (laughs) we are uh, we graduated everybody, every starter. Um, You said Kate Harpering. She's going to be a big freshman coming in for us. Obviously, playing a lot. Hopefully, and. Um, you know, we get Hannah Fecklaris back. She's the one that tore ACL the first game of the year against Trinity Christian. She was going to be huge for us. So, you know, we, we were, we're looking for big things for her. We have um, AC Kep as a senior. Um, we hope to get some big minutes and, and, and lead this team. Um, Abby Lindsay is a great guard for us, kind of a four for us, a uh, small forward. But um, super excited about her. Eloise Smith's uh, been a sleeper. She's a freshman last year, and, and now she's obviously a sophomore who is really, really improved and really impressing all of us coaches. And um, just we're, we're looking forward. We're going to be young. We have a lot of freshmen on the team and totally different look from last year, but uh, we're looking forward to it. We're excited. Yes, ma'am. And before we talk about uh, uh, Kate Harpering, I want to talk about, obviously, you mentioned the youth. How is that, like, as a coach, just, you know, almost like, you know, those learning pains and those growing pains when you get dealing with youth, obviously talented players, but just walk me through how it is as an experience as a coach dealing with youth. Well, you know, we had so many senior leaders last year. We walk in this year, we, we have one, but um, with freshmen and sophomores, um, you know, they're going to be freshmen and sophomores all year. And the biggest cha- change for me as a se- from a senior to a freshman is just the consistency ninth graders and even sophomores, they just aren't consistent. It's just because they're 14 and 15 years old. Um, you know, you come in, have a great practice, and then you know, maybe the next day you don't. And that's not something usually senior-led um, teams do. And so we're just kind of looking for that, trying to, you know, we want them to grow up as fast as we can, but we're going to be dealing with it all year. And it's just, um, honestly, just, just the process of it all. They're just so young and trying to deal with it. Um, and just – Try to understand the building blocks of it. And, again, just for the youth, a young team like that, you just worry that um, about consistency. Tuesday nights may look different than Friday nights for them, you know, just balancing work, school, all this kind of stuff they got, yeah. and throwing sports in there. So, um, you know, it's just a maturity factor, it's, and there's nothing we can do about it. Yes, ma'am. And, and tell me about Kate Harpering. Obviously comes in a very kind of illustrious background. Her dad played. Um, you know, a family full of athletes, just, you know, what are you excited that she's going to bring to the table this year? And what are you kind of hoping to see from her? She, she can score. She can shoot the ball. She can, um, you know, attack the rim, finish different ways. Um, she's just a special kid. As awesome as she is scoring, she, she delivers the ball. She's not selfish. Um, she gets her teammates involved. Um, she loves her teammates. Um, so just looking for huge things. She's been practicing with us for two years, you know, um, she's just been that good. So, uh, we're just happy that she can actually play for us now, you know, as a ninth grader, as a freshman, but, um, she, she's just so talented. She, she just sees the floor. Well, she understands the game, obviously with the, the background, um, she's been around it since she probably could walk. So, uh, just happy to have her out there finally. And hope she, um, you know, stays healthy and, and, uh, we just, we get after it and she leads this, this program and we help her too. I mean, I know people are going to key on her, so I don't want her to put a lot of pressure on herself. But I'm excited. She, she can score. She's good. Yes, ma'am. And and let's talk a little bit about um, your front court this year. You know, how are they kind of looking coming into the season? You know, who's a couple players you're excited about that will be kind of anchoring that front court for you? You know, we uh, like I said, Eloise Smith is going to be big. Um, again, just a, a, another sleeper, I think. Um Harp will be in there for sure. We got AC Kepin. And then, like I said, uh, Abby Lindsay. We're going to play at the maybe three, four spot, maybe a little to five, depending on how, how Hannah stays in there for us. But, um, you know, they're all versatile. We play a, a system where we kind of can um, interchange it's a DHO system, dribble handoffs. And so, you know, we really have a one post system where everybody's interchangeable. So sometimes we'll go five guards. But, you, you know, again, with youth, we'll see who steps up and who competes and uh, who wants to get out there and, can handle the pressure of it early because you know that's what we're looking for right now in tryouts this week so and kids are stepping up which is good so we're excited about it yes ma'am and then this year maris is making the jump from 4a to 6a um i'm pretty sure you're aware of this but three state champions you're bringing now into that 6a classification um you know you guys love joy uh woodward academy just tell me what you're expecting kind of from that heightened level of competition coming into this classification this year 
it's going to be tough, especially with a young team. If I had my senior-led team last year, I'd feel a lot better. But uh, it's a huge jump, you know. And, and you, I think the biggest thing for us is, you know, we, we're not as deep as other teams because of, you know, our, our uh, we don't have that many kids in, in school and um, not that many to choose from. So, you know, if we get a kid hurt, we necessarily don't have another one, a backup as good or so. Um, so that, that's big. You know, we, we're going to face a lot of depth um, issues, I think, with the people we play that, Maybe have eight, nine, ten that, that, that can go. So we got to stay healthy. We got to stay, you know, away from sick, flu, all that kind of stuff. And we got to make sure that uh, we, we we keep the people on the floor, especially early on. Um, you know, just tell everybody else grows up a little bit by January, February. It's definitely going to look different um, being six to eight. Just so much more to choose from. Many more kids. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And 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 tell me kind of about the schedule um, this season. You know, some tournaments you're going to be in. Um, some major opponents you're going to play in the non-region schedule, region schedule. Just what are some things to send out to you just kind of, you know, looking at the schedule? Well, we go up to Thanksgiving to Notre Dame and uh, Chattanooga. We're excited about that. Again, it's going to be kind of trial by fire with the, with the young kids. But we go up there and play two great, great teams um, uh, right before Thanksgiving. Um, we have Etowah outside We of, of region. We play GAC. Um, it's it's loaded. Our region's very good too, but um, I mean, if we loaded it up. We just figure, you know, we need to introduce it to basketball to them one on one uh, as early as we can. And just uh, like I said, they just got to learn. They got to learn trial by fire. It's just going to have to be. Uh, we just don't have time to, you know, just put the waste. We got to put them in front of people that can play because you know our region. Our first round is against the Woodward and Lovejoys of the world, so that's a very tough first round. So we gotta we gotta be prepared for that. Sorry about that, coach. Yes. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yes, my question was: um, Are you return? Are you bringing on any softball or volleyball players this year? Um, we actually, for the first time ever, I don't think we are, which is very unusual. Um, we have a lot of soccer players. I do that. Um, so I'll probably have four or five um, soccer players on my team. So uh, we do not have a softball player and. We have some lower level uh, volleyball players that will be very good for us later on, but we don't this year, which is kind of crazy. That's interesting. Okay, because I remember uh, uh, last year you definitely had the softball player and every Fantucci, and I think you said you had a soccer player, correct? Soccer player, yes, and we yes, have plenty of those this year too. Yes, ma'am. And then <laughs> kind of talking more about your team, kind of what's your offensive identity? Do you like – you mentioned the dribble handoffs. Um, do you like to play more towards the post? perimeter shooting, kind of give it to, you know, your young kind of rising star and then Katie Harpering, or just a little bit of everything? We we have a, um, like I said, DHO, dribble handoff system. It's kind of a read and react. Um, we give them a lot of freedom. We try to, uh, you know, attack their weaknesses, and that's kind of our system. We really try to size it up. We do a lot of scouting, and so we see kind of where we can weaknesses. I don't want to give everything away, but we try to just see what they have when they don't and, and you know, where we can gain an advantage on them. Um, Hannah will give us a great look in the post. Um, we do have p players that can get, you know, north and south. They like to get to the rim and finish. But we also have some shooters on the perimeter that we think we can be pretty successful with this year. So if we can put it all together, it would be a great combination. You know, it sounds good on paper. I just hope we can actually make it happen on the court. But uh, we're working toward that now to, to do that. So it really is more a read and react system. It's not just a, you know, A to B, B to C system. Um, so the kids like it. But with youth, that's going to be difficult because my kids have run it for four years last year, so they knew what to do. So this, this is going to be diff a little difficult this year to start with. So we'll see. Yes, ma'am. A lot of growing pains. And then as far as your team, just defensively, you know, what are some things you kind of harp on that you want to see just, you know, on that side of the ball that you want your team to kind of implement the season? Well, that's our identity is defense because, you know, we think that never has a night off. That Any gym we go into, that, that can be there. And so, you know, Nights you, you're not shooting well or, you know, you go in, you're cold or just whatever. Defense is our identity. That That's what we do. We feel like if we can hold you to, you know, under 35 points or whatever, if any, any on, a, on a bad night we feel like we can go out and put up 35, 36 points, you know. So that we, we, we hang our hat on that. We spend a lot of time on it in practice and stuff. And I know if we go back and look through the state playoffs, we help teams to ridiculously low numbers. And so um, it just it just helps, you know. And with a young team, we've really got to make sure they understand that too in case we have those highs and lows of not scoring and such. So, um, you know, that that is our identity. That's what we try to do and try to score off, off um, you know, steals and 
and things like that as well on nights when we're not necessarily our half court offense isn't clicking like it should. Yes, ma'am. And then just to kind of talk one more question about the classification, obviously, you know, River Ridge is in there, they're returning all their starters. Rockdale has returning the player kind of the year, you know, and, and teams like that that you're probably going to face, you know, down the line, um, potentially in the postseason, just, you know, when you match up against teams like that, you know, what are you kind of hoping from your team and, and then what kind of problems do they pose just having all that experience kind of when you're still, you know, working through growing pains and kind of dealing with a lot more youth? Just what you said. It's going to be, you know, deer in the headlights early probably if we were to meet them. But um, just, I just want them to compete this year especially. I just want them to, the, you know, every challenge that we, we put in front of them, I hope they just, you know, hit it head on. Nobody expects us to be great and wonderful like we were last year. Like I said, we are super young. and so, But I don't want us to, you know, coward to, to other teams or teams that, you know, they do have a ton of, of uh, senior-led uh, players that are really, really good returning. I, I just want us to hit it head on and just honestly just you know, don't don't be afraid of it. You start out 0-0 and, you know, we give, we give them our best shot. We'll scout the heck out of them and see what we can do and see how we can slow them down. And, um, yeah, I just, I just hope they don't get intimidated and um, just grow from this and, and learn from this experience and great basketball teams and players out there to, um, you know, just like I said, build on and be better from this year and then next year as well. Yes, ma'am. All right, Coach. Well, two more questions before I kind of let you go. Um, one, what are you most excited about this season? What are you most looking forward to um, as far as before the season kicks off? I like the youth, believe it or not. I didn't think I would coming in. It's just the, the – it's a challenge. It's endless possibilities, and um, I like to overachieve. I like to take a group that nobody believes we can do anything with and, and overachieve, so – I'm excited about that. I'm excited about some kids stepping up and showing me that they, you know, want to play basketball and want to want to play this year and stuff. So um, just super excited about the, the endless possibilities and overachieving with a group that people are like, oh, they graduated everybody. There's no way they can win games. So um, I would say the challenge is the biggest thing I'm excited about. I think that's the best thing. Obviously, you know, when you have a team, you see it across, you know, major sport leagues, college football, NFL sometimes, even women's basketball. Just that team that flies under the radar. You're counting them out. They develop some chemistry. Nobody has their eye on them. And then he's come out of nowhere and they surprise you. I think that's one of the best teams to have. I hope we can do that. I hope we're talking about that in February. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. And it's the final question. You know, what do you think Maris needs to do? Obviously, we've mentioned the youth, but what do you think you need to do just to try to be in peak position, be there competing and contending for a state title again this year? I think we need to get better every day and understand that. Um, I think every game is a great game film for me and, and my coaches to, to make us better. I don't think we need to get caught up on wins and losses. I don't know how that's going to go. I think we need to just take each as a stepping stone and, and, and learn from it and get better from it. If we can do that consistently by February, region tournament time, state tournament time, I think we would be a pretty good basketball team. If we dwell on it as a youth group, you know, and just worry about wins and losses and what we, I, I think, you know, we can fall down a, a bad path. But if we just learn from it and, and grow from it and, uh, like I said, put some uh, – but put everything to bed, if bad that we do by February and we can keep getting better, I think we'll be a pretty good basketball team by February. Yes, ma'am. Well, I just want to say good luck to your team this season. I can't wait to watch you guys in action. It was a pleasure talking to you, Coach, and hope to have you on again at some point this season. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. All right, guys, so that was Coach Kim Hickson. Very excited to talk to her and her very youthful young team. But – as she mentioned, do not sleep on the Maris War Eagles. They could be very dangerous this upcoming season. Kate Harpering obviously comes from an illustrious and you know basketball background with her dad, a lot of athletes in that household, and she's expecting her youth to kind of step up. And sometimes those could be the most dangerous teams. So obviously we're going to see this year. Um, excited to watch them play. Excited to watch 6A, which again before we go to break, I think is going to be probably the top. Um, classification in the state this year. You have River Ridge returning all of their starters. You have Lovejoy, who beat Rockdale last year in the Elite Eight. You have Rockdale County that returning Daniel Carnegie. She averaged 21.7 points per game. Um, Brunswick's in there. You have Woodward Academy, the 5A defending champion. Maris now, Woodstock, Forest Park, North Forsyth, who's coming down from 7A. I mean, you just have a plethora of teams that are very good and are deep so it's going to be a great year this year in 6a but um we will be back after the break and if our sponsor um and we'll see you guys in a little bit
All right, guys, we are back. The last uh, segment today is going to be with Craig Sager Jr., a guy that does it all, the myth, the man, the legend. Uh, excited to have him on the show. Uh, we're going to be breaking down some of these transfers, major rankings, and teams to kind of look out for in women's basketball this year. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and break them on. How's it going, Najee? It's going good, man. Staying busy. How you doing, man? Doing well, man. Coach Hickson, uh, that's very interesting. And she's 100% right. When you have a goal of holding teams to under 35 points, you know you're a defensive team. That's that's ridiculous. No, I agree. I mean, that's pretty insane. I mean, you're holding those opponents to that. I mean, you're going to pretty much be in every game if you're holding teams below 35 when it comes to basketball. Even if your offense isn't clicking, you're going to be in the game. So, yeah, that's pretty insane stat. Yep, they did it all postseason, too. She's she's right. And, uh, yeah, that will be really interesting. I think that's what makes uh, girls' high school basketball so intriguing. She talked about just the matchup potential. You have these teams that they're going to shoot a ton of three-pointers, and they have maybe some rebounders. Uh, you have other transition teams than others that will just hit you with the size. And so it really is a – in terms of scouting, exactly what you said. You look at what the other team's strengths are, and you just try to try to game plan and take that away from you. But, I mean, there are just a lot of unique teams this year. I think when I was looking over this list, I counted 70 different transfers that have already been documented. So it's going to be a really interesting season. For sure. And I actually want to start with that. We can actually start with some of these transfers. Uh, a couple of teams that stood out to me was Hebron and Christian. Uh, four major transfers this year. It looks like they made it all the way to the state championship game last year, and, you know, they lost. But, you know, can, with these major transfers coming in, can they win it all? And then also Norcross. Norcross, they won the state title last year in 7A. Three major transfers into their program this year. Um, you know, how will they mesh and how will they look in coming into kind of that historic culture? So what do you think about those two teams and those major transfers they have coming in? Well, I think Hebron and – Norcross, those are probably two of the most consist consistent teams anywhere in the state. They're good every year. And, yeah, Hebron Christian specifically, that team really built off transfers this year. They got the Butler sisters from uh, Winder Barrow. Uh, one's a senior. That is Trinity. And then, the yeah, I think she's a sophomore. That's Ja'Kara Butler, six foot, 5'10". Both of them are going to make a big impact. Uh, they got Maya James. That's a point guard who had a great season at uh, Mount Vernon Presbyterian last year. And then uh, Cameron Register, another sophomore. So they're bringing in experienced players that really uh, led their teams last year. And then you're joining a program like Hebron, who's coming into Class A. They, they have a really good chance in, in uh, that classification. They're used to just competing in that gauntlet of private school teams where they're playing St. Francis, playing Holy Innocence. Now it's kind of – there's less of those private schools they're going to see in their region, but still obviously a ton of talent. And then, yeah, you mentioned Norcross. Uh, Shania Farmer from Duluth, she's six foot. Uh, Mariah Val Valerie, she's only a sophomore from Mountain View, another six-footer. And then uh, the point guard from Tallulah Falls, Verne Charlton. So three big transfers right there. So when you see – a team that already has tons of pieces, a team like Norcross that won the state championship last year, returning a pretty big nucleus from it and then adding new pieces. I mean, that's going to be really impressive. And they've obviously been at it uh, this off season and these tournaments, AAU, and it, it's going to come together for them for sure. Yeah, and I definitely agree with that. I'm curious to see how Norcross is going to look again in 7A. Um, talked about the major matchup with them and Lovejoy later on this season. Um, that they scheduled they played last year. It was three-point victory for Lovejoy. So, I don't know. It could be a bit of rivalry there between those 7A and 6A schools. But I want to kind of get into um, first team, second team, third team. You know, just who are some players on this list that sent out? Obviously, Brianna Preston. Uh, I believe Coach said that she is having offers between Texas and another school down there. So, that will be kind of interesting. But who are some players on this list that kind of stands out? I mean, Deanna Collins from Brookwood looks like a player that could be potentially dangerous. But – who on this list really stands out to you? I think what's interesting about Brianna Preston, uh, Lovejoy's star player, averaging about like 16 points per game, you look at that region, that region also has Rockdale County in it. That region has Forest Park in it. That region has Woodward Academy in it. So pretty much that first team 
uh, class six A is all residing in that one region. So you're going to see Brianna Preston going up against Danielle Carnegie. She was the all classification player of the year last year, 22 points per game. You have uh, another guard, Jada Brown of Forest Park. She's going to St. John's. And then Sarah Lewis at Woodward Academy. Uh, she was great for them last year on their run to the Class 5A state championship. But this year, she's really stepping into that primary role as their lead player. And she's coming off 14 points per game. So just right there, those people, those players are going to be going up against each other in region. They all can score. They all can lead. Uh, so a lot of great guard play in that classification and that uh, first team. And then also, uh, I mentioned River Ridge. Uh, Mattia Gailey, she averaged 16.3 points per game. River Ridge fell short to Lovejoy last season, I think in the Elite Eight, and they're coming back with a ton of talent in 6A. So 6A really just got better when you look at the teams like Woodward co coming in, teams like North Forsyth, uh, Marist. I mean, it's going to be quite a classification, and it's amazing just how good uh, girls basketball is in this state. I mean, we have. I'm looking at this list. You have sophomores that are already getting a massive D1 offers. Yeah, exactly. I definitely agree with that. And I want to kind of analyze 7A a little bit more and then jump into the kind of 5A with you. But on the 7A list, just who are some teams that, like, stand out? Obviously, we know Brooke Wolf, Deanna Collins is going to be major for them. Norcross, obviously, creme de la creme every year. You know, they're pretty good. Last year, they won the state championship. Uh, Carrollton's on there, but talk to me about Buford. You think that's a team that's kind of flying under the radar? Usually, you know, they're kind of right there at the pecking order, being there and, and playing kind of deep into the season. Yeah, Buford, they've been outstanding. They're always tough, well coached. Uh, players will want to transfer there, play there. It's a great program, tons of support, and we know how good their uh, facilities are. I think it's just going to be a challenge, though. You look at Brookwood, you look at Archer, Norcross. It is a gauntlet. South for is going to be really talented. And then Carrollton's a team that has, I mean, you look at just the effort they play with. Uh, that's a takeaway. Everyone that plays them knows it's, oh, man, this is going to be a really hard game. This team's scrappy. They, they play hard every single possession. They'll make it hard on you. That's kind of their style. But I think I saw with Carrollton, um, Georgia Southern commit, Kanaji Daniel, uh, she tore her ACL this summer, so she is out for the season. Uh, Carrollton will still be really good, uh, but that does um, kind of help the rest of the region not having to contend with her. And then it looks like Buford, uh, they're coming off a decent season. Uh, they went to the second round, I think, lost to Brunswick, and I think it's going to be, yeah, Tamori planting a West Carolina commit and Tatum Osmond. So Buford usually has a lot of size. They always have like, they aren't necessarily a three point shooting team, but they seem to always have that one girl in the corner that can knock it down. And uh, they just come out with a lot of balance year in and year out. Yeah. And then before we came on the show, I remember you mentioned to me, Kale, um, obviously in that five, a region, Warner Robbins looking pretty good this year, but Team kind of like under the radar, looks like GAC. Last year they had a really good run, deep run in the playoffs. They had um, a girl in there that was scoring a lot for them, was playing really well, but they came up just a little bit short. Obviously, Holly Unlicense in Class 4A. But just what are you seeing in, in a Class 5A and who are some teams you kind of keeping your eye on there? Yeah, Kel's the team that everyone seems to think. It's their year. They've made a huge breakout of – campaign I think when they were all were freshmen they were undefeated they lost to Buford in the finals uh, Westlake cross pass with them when they were in 6a so I think moving down to 5a is going to really benefit Kel we mentioned how tough 6a is so they're going to avoid all those key contenders but yeah you look at a I think a Warner Robins is good uh, Ware County is going to be good this year down there so and also uh yeah so I think 5A, the characteristic, you have Kel, which is a team that came down from 6A, and then there's just a lot of good uh, middle Georgia teams with, as I mentioned, the Warner Robins and um, Ware Counties. Yeah, exactly. And then looking at kind of 4A, you know, I see Stockbridge is on there as a top-ranked team, Southwest DeKalb, Westminster, Holly Innocence, um, Griffin's on there. Just, you know, some teams on there, like who are – kind of be, you know, who's your sleeper 
in the class four A and who you think is a team that's probably gonna control and, you know, be there deep in the playoff run? Well, Luella is always outstanding. That's a proud program. Same sort of deal with Baldwin. And so I think it's going to be interesting when you have a team like Holy Innocence coming in. Uh, once again, back to Hebron. Holy Innocence is used to that private school gauntlet that they play in the region. So then what this reclassification has done, it really has set up a private public dynamic we haven't seen in the higher classifications above the Class A's. So in 4A, you got Westminster now. you got Pace Academy. Uh, you, you mentioned Holy Innocence. So it will be really interesting. I think Holy Innocence has that pedigree of being a top uh, program year in and year out that's just had so much outstanding talent. But when you're playing teams like Luella, uh, Baldwin, as I mentioned, I mean, that's going to be still very tough and interesting. And I think it's just going to come down to – just that style of play. And then even a team like East Forsyth, who is new to the kind of new to the state, that's only a two year program. I have been so impressed with what their athletics have been able to do. We saw a similar thing with uh, Denmark when they came to the scene where it's not just football, it's across the spectrum. I mean, I'm looking at right now, their softball team, this is their first year playing. They're in the final four right now. And so I've looked a little bit at East Precise basketball roster. That's probably a program that's going to be up in 7A in a couple of years because uh, once it opens, they're kind of pulling players from different areas. We mentioned North Forsyth, how good they are. So I think East Forsyth is a program that they're going to come in with a lot of talent that could shock uh, people in 4A. Exactly. And then, you know, looking at, um, you know, one more region, um, you know, 3A, 2A, you know, 1A, you mentioned kind of the parallel with the mixing with public and kind of private. You know, is there any teams in those classifications that just kind of jumped off the board to you that you think could really make an impact this year that, again, could be fine under the radar? Yeah, Lumpkin County in 3A, they obviously won last year. They're incredible. They uh, they did lose their head coach, though. He actually went to Lake Oconee Academy, I believe, but they have a lot of returning talent. And Lumpkin County, that's not a program that's going to be built off transfers. They, they build it from the ground up. Those girls have been kind of waiting for their turn. They've been playing together nonstop. And so that's great to see with a program like that. Uh, they're going to be joined by Hebron Christian in 3A. They're going to be joined by Carver Columbus, Wesley, and now. So that will be interesting. And then in 2A, that's kind of Mount Perrin's uh, – classification to lose they had such an incredible run last year to the first ever state title they're going to be in 2a now uh, you look at a landmark christian maybe uh, central macon has a lot of talent i mentioned uh, kind of middle georgia's really been on the rise uh, they've been kind of playing each other in all these tournaments kind of iron sharp sharpens iron and so you have a lot of these programs that are in the lower classifications that have been playing up against the veterans, the Baldwins, the Luellas all these years. So I think uh, Central Macon's going to be ready to go. And then you look at the, the bottom classifications, you're still going to see that dominance uh, from these small private schools that have consistently gone up, played 7A schools, competitively beat them. So a team like St. Francis, they always have so much size. Uh, just so many athletes, so many future Division One stars. So I think uh, St. Francis will be good again. Galloway, Lake Oconee County, um, and then Elbert County also, a team that is just plays really hard. They had a great run last year to the state title. So I think that will be interesting to see Elbert County, St. Francis kind of in that same Class A Division One. Right. And I know for years, man, you've been following women's basketball, obviously on the high school level. We've seen the transition kind of in NBA and collegiate sports, being able to shoot the ball well um, and things like that. So how has high school really transitioned, uh, women's basketball specifically, how has that transition kind of now to that level? What do you more see so in the past couple of years that you didn't really see five, ten years ago that you see now in today's game? Well, I got to cover probably the most spectacular high school athlete I've ever seen that's Asia Durr back when she was at St. Pius and what was so impressive about her uh, I don't know if anyone has like looked into it she really was ambidextrous like no lie she could 
do exactly what she could do with the right hand with the left. She, I mean, she could go up to the foul line and shoot lefty if she wanted to. It didn't matter. She was so incredible at the high school level. And uh, I think it's just players like that that continue to elevate the the state each year. I mean, when you're going up against a, a high school athlete like her that's going to be – playing for the U.S. national team during the summer. I mean, it just raises the excitement. It's like, wow, I'm going up against literally like the best player in the country right now. It seems like Georgia continuously has a player like that. Uh, so I think the star power has been uh, massive. But then you'll just watch a, a game and you kind of notice things where you're like, okay, that's – I don't usually see that before when I used to play basketball. I remember one of the first uh, – boys championships just for an example that I covered I would see someone have a steal and a fast break and it's like imagine like the LeBron play where someone's on a fast break and they want to block and he comes in blocks off the backboard well these guys were so athletic that they would kind of jump up to do the layup and they're literally looking over their shoulder to be like okay when's he gonna try to block my shot and then like once he tried then they'd go up under and I was like okay I've never seen that and then you watch college basketball you watch the NBA and it's like okay they're doing that now so I think you just see things that uh, these high school athletes are able to do and especially the ones that are going to go on and play to the next level and then they just continue to take it to the next level so I think on the girls it's just having these big shooters. It's having uh, centers that can go out and stretch the court if they need to and shoot. I mean, that's something you didn't used to see, but now you have these kind of stretch forwards that can go in there, play with their back against the basket, but also they can knock down threes. So I think it's just uh, because it's so challenging, uh, because they continue to play like year round and all these AAU circuits, I think that the players just getting a, uh, more versatile you used to have situations where in especially in girls basketball if you don't have someone that can beat the press and dribble the ball up the court like I'm talking serious handles like you got to be able to break double teams if you don't have that the other team's just gonna full court press you and they're gonna complete you throw, throw you off your game but if you have these like experienced ball handlers that can break the press you completely throw that out the window. The team's not going to try that on you because you're going to break it. So I just think uh, we've just seen all those things happen and just the great coaching, the great players. Uh, it's just become a really exciting uh, brand of basketball to watch, just how prepared they are and just how uh, the teams come together. I agree, and I think I've seen a video. I'm definitely going to have to show you, Craig. It was this girl. She was six six, still in high school, 15 years old. She did a nice spin move and just dunked the ball. Very athletic, and I think you're starting to see that too. Um, not as prevalent yet, but I think that's going to what you're going to start seeing in the next, like, you know, five, ten years, next decade or so, just more athletic players being able to go to the hoop, dunk the basketball, and be able to make a difference just athletically. But obviously this is not just a, a basketball show. This is a softball show, volleyball show. So, Craig, I know you had some rankings. I know we're getting into the creme de la creme and the coach towards the end of the season of uh, softball and volleyball. So just real quick, um, you know, what are some teams you're looking out for in softball and volleyball? Obviously, I know we're hitting down to, like, the, the final stretch, the final four and things like that. But what are some teams that's impressed you this season in those two sports? Yeah, um, well, actually, people can go to scoreatl.com. It's the softball semifinals. I guess it's not necessarily the semis because there's a loser's bracket, but there's four teams left in each class. And Wesleyan actually just beat uh, a Coney County 10-0. That was the first result. Uh, I think they mercy ruled them. So at this point, uh, it's in that loser's bracket format. So Oconee County will go down to the loser's bracket. They aren't out of it yet, and then Wesleyan will advance. So they're just playing the one game right now. I think a big matchup later today, uh, Buford and East Coweta. East Coweta is a team that I think over the last five seasons, I've seen them ranked number one in the country three two or three times. I mean, they've been, they've been the top team in the country. So, And then Buford, I think they have over 10 uh, softball state titles. So that's going to be a big matchup to watch. North Gwinnett's been outstanding. They're playing Hillgrove, uh, 6A Pope versus River Ridge, uh, Appalachia versus Lassiter, same sort of deal. 
Um, so just a lot of big matchups. And then, as I mentioned, I'm, I want to see what East Forsyth does. They're playing Central Carroll right now. That's a brand new school. I mean, if, if this softball team can come out and take 4A, what a story that would be. First year as a program, pretty much uh, taking a state championship, that would be really impressive for them. And then, uh, yeah, so that's going on right now. A lot of uh, big softball results. And then they'll play again on Friday and then close it out this weekend. So the season is wrapping up in softball and then in volleyball. I really want to see this North Gwinnett-Buford matchup in the semifinals in 7A. Uh, also, you're going to have Walton Lambert. But I think North Gwinnett and Buford, they've been just outstanding state championship potential. Walton, obviously – has the most volleyball state titles of all time. So it's going to be tough for them. They won it last year after their streak of, God, multiple years came to an end. So can they get back on top? We'll see. They, they seem to just be unbeatable at this time of the year. And then uh, you have a big matchup with Pope and Johns Creek. I think Pope might have been the only team that beat Buford. Um, and also uh, North Forsyth against Sequoia. Sequoia – had a huge win over Alpharetta in the second round. So that could have even been like a state championship matchup right there. So I think once Sequoia got past Alpharetta, like they did uh, that three, nothing win in the second, they're going to be, they're playing with a lot of confidence. You have uh, Jefferson in four a, uh, sorry, five a uh, GAC against Morgan County. Uh, that's going to be really good. Not Morgan County, sorry. Who was that? McIntosh. Yeah, G GAC against McIntosh. Uh, 4A, you got Pace Academy has been the team to beat. They only have one in-state loss so far. They're about to play Trinity Christian. Uh, 3A, I think the big matchup is going to be Sandy Creek and Morgan County. Uh, that will be really good. And then you have North Cobb Christian, Landmark, uh, Savannah Arts against Mount Perrin, and then can Mount Bethel win the Class A? That will be interesting to see. That's a team that's kind of new to GHSA. They're ranked number one right now in Class A, so that would be a big win for them if they can take this volleyball state title. Yep, and great uh, analysis there from Craig, kind of just informing us on what's going on in both of those sports, softball and volleyball. As you mentioned, man, East Forsyth is a program. Just been in the running. Their football team, I believe, had a 4-1 and one start to the season. Um, you know, uh, volleyball, they're playing really well. Softball, they have a chance now to, to potentially host a state title. I mean, this incredible program in athletics there from a very new program. And, guys, I definitely want to uh, say score Atlanta duo. Me and Craig will be having a show very soon, debuting next week, November 1st. Uh, it's going to be called Underrated and Overlooked. So if you love this dynamic duo, you will see more of us. Me and him are going to be breaking down some high school sports. We'll be getting into some college athletics and maybe even some professional sports. It's going to be a very good jam-packed session every Tuesday at noon. So make sure you tune into that. And make sure you tune in tomorrow to Craig's show, GHH, GHSA Drive for the State Title Show. He will be having some guests tomorrow, and I may or may not make an appearance. But tune into that show tomorrow. At noon, will be a good show, and we'll see you guys next time. And thanks, Craig, for joining the show. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Najee. All right, guys.